hot wire foam cutters. What are they all about? Find out here on Layla Central. G'day guys, welcome back to Layla Central. My name's Clinton, your average modeler. And in this video, I decided to do a bit of a, a review on my hot wire foam cutter and give you guys a bit of interesting information about it. So for those that uh, have been following the channel, you would have seen recently, I did a bit of sculpting with some foam using my hot wire foam cutter and the tools. Now, surprisingly, or uh, essentially to my surprise, I got a lot of positive feedback where people are quite interested in seeing the hot wire foam cutter work. They were also interested in essentially, you know, my actual tool of choice. And as a result, you know, a lot of people were quite interested in seeing where I bought it from, wanted the link. So I thought for those that are interested and those that don't use a hot wire foam cutter, I'll give some details over, you know, what I'm using here, um, how much it costs, along with some tips on, you know, if you're cutting some foam as well, how do you actually use the hot wire foam cutter? And of course, why did I choose it? So as you can see in front of you, apart from seeing a mess, um, you can see where I've actually used some foam, some poly extruded foam in these areas here and across here. And with my earlier video, I used the hot wire foam cutter to sculpt and shape that. Now, I get a lot of this foam for nothing. Um, you can buy this stuff from hardware stores and hobby shops as well. This stuff here um, that you can actually see that I've been cutting now, you'll notice it's got these little bit of zigzag sort of grooves and that's essentially so it can flex and bend in there certain things. Now this stuff here I managed to score for free and some pretty big sheets of it. Um, and it's predominantly used for insulation of walls. Um, now you can buy this itself in quite a big pack it's about $50, $60 Australian, and you get an awful lot of it. Now, I on the other hand managed to score it for free because uh, someone was using it and bought a few too many and they wanted the convenience of it just gone. So I managed to swoop on it and uh, it does a very great job in sculpting essentially these areas. So what you can do is, you know, you put your foundation down like this, you put your scenic materials and stuff on top and, you know, away you go. Um, but there are many ways on how you can do your scenic foundations. I'm just doing it like this because it's cheap, it's quick, it's easy and frankly I've got the materials. Um, you know, why wouldn't I uh, lessen my cost impact in my hobby? Now, when sculpting polyextruded foam such as this, now, for those that are not uh, not sure, as you can see, as you look at polyextruded foam, you've got all these little bubbles of foam that are compressed and held together with glue. Now, this stuff here is quite lightweight. You know, it's extremely light. You can carve it with a knife. The problem is, though, if you use a sharp knife, these compressed bubbles and glued everywhere the bubbles go everywhere which essentially once you finish sculpting it using a hot uh using a brush uh, a wire brush or a knife etc you know you make one hell of a great mess which turns a lot of people off using poly extruded foam now some other people will use this type of foam this here is a more high density foam can be used in insulation some people use it for scenic boards um, you know it's quite good it is a foam it is a bit more stronger it is still lightweight but it is far more dense like you don't have those bubbles like this sort of polystyrene actually has um, so you got two different options this is a bit more expensive as well it is a much more stronger uh, material to use but obviously if you use a knife and a brush on it etc it doesn't make as much of a mess as this other stuff here now when I actually uh, cut my foam here, I use an item called a hot wire foam cutter. So I'll cover that with you. So this, in short, is a hot wire foam cutter kit. Now, in short, what actually happens is you plug this into a power source or, you know, sometimes a battery, depending on what you've purchased. It runs a current through here, through the actual wire, and creates a bit of heat. Very similar to how an electric kettle works, except we're not boiling water here. It's, you know, it's heating an element up, and that heat itself will cut through this foam itself. Now, this kit that I purchased here, this was uh, quite cheap. Now, before I actually purchased this, I did an awful lot of research on what was out there. Um, you've got some of the known brands out there. I'm not going to label them, of course, um, which, you know, they are quite expensive. And to me, I thought you're just paying for a brand label. Um, and to be honest, it didn't come with enough accessories that I wanted. And before you know it, you're spending hundreds of dollars on something that's going to do a simple job. So I shopped around and found a supplier in Australia that stocked this simple kit 
but it's a very useful kit. Now, for those that are interested, if you want to purchase one of these or wonder where I got this, there is a link in the description below, um, but I'm not a fill out with them. I don't make any money of it. I get n absolutely nothing. So um, it's up to you guys if you purchase from them, but essentially I'm just giving a review on this and how I actually use it. So my hot wire foam cut, uh, cutter kit came with, as you can see here, a one piece uh, main unit, which is this unit here, which is connected to my actual main power supply. This isn't a hot wire knife, but essentially it does give the use of a hot wire foam knife. So it's essentially just a long stick. As you can see here, I call it a wand. Uh, it might have many names, but it comes with a wand. It comes with this, which is an engraving tool. Now I'll show you this a bit more later on. This little element right at the end here will heat up and it allows you to scribe into foam and do all sorts of things, which I'll show you this in a little bit of a while. And the other thing that I use quite frequently is the hot wire foam part itself, which as you can see, we've got a nice big thin piece of wire here, a um, bit of space that heats up and then it slices through the actual foam itself. Now this kit itself comes with these three attachments and was, you know, around about $60 comes with all the pieces I need. I don't need to expand it. I don't have to replace batteries and I am quite happy with it. And it also did come with a lot of spare extra wire for this. Um, so now the beauty of this is I can be using it. So I could be using this knife here, cutting and slicing through stuff and then go, hang on, I need to use something else. I can then turn it off, pull that out and plug my next accessory that I wanted to use straight back in there. Now there is a little noggin here right here which lines up with the attachment down in there chuck that in flicker on and give it about 20 seconds and she's heated up and then ready to go so you know i can swap between attachments as i do my sculpting depending on what i need i'm not waiting ages for it uh, to heat up you know about 20 30 seconds and she's good to go so what i'll do now is i'll plug this into the power heat it up and then we'll see uh, how it goes Okay, so I've just plugged that in, turned the power on. Now I'll wait a couple of seconds, like so. I've literally turned this on, then hit the record button. Adjust the camera a little bit. Now what I'm going to do here is obviously cut some of this poly extruded foam for you guys to show you. And what better way to show you than having this blank space right here to my bridge just over here, line up with this over here. So what I'm gonna do is cut some foam and sculpt it and put it right in here so you get to see the actual results itself. So, all right, so we'll see how this is. This may uh, still need uh, heating up. We'll take a look, it's been about 20, 30 seconds. So what I'll do is I'll just put it here. There we go, and she's already cutting, which is fantastic. So now a couple of tips, or essentially safety tips as well. This bit of wire is quite hot. Do yourself a favor and avoid making contact with your hands. I haven't done it yet, and frankly, I don't want to experience it, but I can imagine it's going to hurt and it's going to sting. So do yourself a favor, keep your hands clear of that wire at all times. The other thing to bear in mind, poly extruded foam, particularly this where you've got your bubbles and there's adhesive that's gluing it, breathing in the fumes from this heating element when it cuts through this has been known to be quite toxic. Do yourself a favor, if you're using a hot wire foam cutter, use it in a large ventilated area, wear yourself a mask and just don't breathe the fumes in. Um, you know, treat it like an airbrush. You know, you don't want to breathe in those fumes when you're airbrushing. You don't want to breathe these fumes in either. Now, I'm in a well-ventilated room being in my shed here. So, and of course, we're recording to you guys. I won't be breathing in these fumes, but I'll be educating you, you know, how it actually goes. So you got your wire and you know, you let the wire do the cutting for you. Don't force this wire through. If it's not cutting quick enough, you need to get something a little bit more stronger with uh, more current passing through to make the element hotter. If you try and push and force it through, you're gonna break your wire. This is incredibly thin. So, you know, let the element do the cutting for you. So what I'll do is I'll just sit it on there. It's cutting in its own pace and you can see the wire passing through and it slows down a little bit, but then we're then through. And one of the things you can do is obviously as you're passing through an area, say this part right here, this area is gonna get a bit cold as it makes contact with your surface that you're cutting. If you wanna speed it up a bit, you've got all this extra wire here, which is quite hot. So what you can do, as you've seen in some of my videos, is I'll put the element, put the cutting element in here, 
like this. But then what I'll do is I'll seesaw it backwards and forwards down. So I'm always trying to put the hottest element in contact with it. So you may cut it a bit more quicker, for example, like this. Done. So, you know, it is only, <laughs> it's not a huge difference, but you know, it can make your life a bit easier. Now, as I mentioned before, I can swap these tips out depending on what I actually want. So what I'll do here is I'll just flick it off at my switch right here, turn it off. I'll take my element out, obviously being careful for this, uh, this bit of hot wire. I don't want that uh, burning anything or touching anything. So I'll take that out. I'll put my sculpting knife in, put that straight in like so. I'll turn it back on, give it a few, again, about 20 seconds to heat up, and then I'm back in action again. You know, the downtime is minimal. Um, now, this uh, this thing is quite good if, for example, this if you're cutting chunks off like I showed you just before, that attachment there is quite good. If you want to cut something in the center of this, that's not going to do the job. That's where this fella comes in. So I'll sink the knife in here, cut around it, and then push it out. Again, you've seen it in some of my videos where I'll demonstrate it here as well for you. So same principle, what I'll do is I'll push it in here, cut around and go for it. And again, if I see saw it, I'm putting the hottest element in contact with the foam itself. So there we go, it's in. And I'll just see saw it around a bit. Come down. And again, you, you let the element do the cutting for you, don't force it through. You're more guiding it than anything. So again, there we go. Oh, we're still in contact with something. There we are. And we're done. So this is very useful for those sorts of applications. The other part, all the talk we mentioned, is this, the engraver. So why would you use this engraver? Well, let me show you where. So here I've got my high density foam board right here. So a lot more denser. Now this little engraving tool can be quite useful for engraving things. Now you might look at this and go, oh, this is quite boring, there's not much to it. Now say for instance, okay, I was going to use this, so I'll get rid of that. So I was going to use this just on the edge of my train line, so, so roughly about here somewhere or whatever. Now this is just to illustrate a point more than anything. We've got this area here. I'm going to build like a bit of a brick wall, but rather than using plastic card, I could use this density foam, use my engraving tool, and even with a, a nice strong metal ruler, certainly not timber, but a metal ruler, I could use this and essentially engrave some brickwork in here. So now I'm not gonna use a ruler and go to that sort of trouble and fuss, but I'll show you what I mean. So we could, for example, here, now I'm gonna freehand this, so this could go uh, belly up, we'll wait and see. So cut in here. Here's an example there. So I've added some texture using this engraving tool. Now, if you're gonna use it on this, it is a hot element. It's gonna keep sinking in and keep cutting. So as you can see, some of those grooves are incredibly wide. They're also quite deep. So if I wanted to make these lines a bit more finer and not as deep, but still get the texture in, I'd be moving incredibly fast to get that essentially engraving occur and consistency. Now, you know, you get a ruler out, you could produce some pretty good results with this if you wanted to. If you're doing O-gauge modeling, you know, I would be doing this an awful lot. Um, you know, building some nice texture in here. And by the time you paint it, you wouldn't even know. Um, you know, it'll do the job quite well. Um, you know, you can use it for cobbles, all manner of things. So the engraving tool can be quite handy. The other thing you may want to do, I don't know why you would, but you might even want to you know, write, write your name. So I'll put, uh, Put my name and I'll put in the actual 
put in the ear, you know? <laughs> and then when it's glued down, no one will know, and then when you pull it apart, you might see it, nah. So, but anyway, you know, so that's the engraver. A useful tool, something I may not use uh, a lot of. Obviously, I'll use the other two attachments a lot. But, um, you know, to some people, like that, this could be quite handy. And this came with the kit itself as a whole. So, you know, normally this is an optional extra. Same with the this other little knife device here. So, you know, got the whole lot for less than some of the known brand hot wire foam cutters. Does the job. It's great value. And, you know what, I'm not making an awful lot of mess. Um, you know, the hot wire foam cutter reduces the mess in cutting foam. You know, you're not getting the bubbles everywhere. Your biggest enemy, as you can see here, is yourself. I myself am my own worst enemy. So the only untidy thing that needs replacing is me. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so what we're going to do just to show is I've got a nice big bit of foam sitting up here that I'll cut. I'll sculpt it in for this and uh, show you, you know, how you go about it. Okay, so <clears throat> you can see a lot of off cuts uh, right here. Now, as you're aware, had the scenic over there. So where we started with this video was this area here was completely empty. So using that high wire foam cutter, you know, I've sculpted my embankment. There's my central uh, entry to the layout itself from the frittle yard. So the idea here, for example, as we look in a little bit more closer, this is cut straight down. So what my idea is, I'm going to put like a little bit of a textured bit of plastic across here to make it look like a bit of a um, retaining wall uh, right here. Now, obviously, most of these bridges will carry a road of some sort. However, I've taken some great inspiration from some other um, images. So what I'm going to do is actually put a series of bushes along here to give the impression that okay we've got this uh embankment going on there's going to be some bushes and stuff and then the road would be behind it so i'm not going to sculpt and model a road in here but model the embankment so it looks like there's a row of bushes here but then the road's behind that in a sense now with my uh bridge itself as you can see here now what i've actually done is i've inserted it and put it in such a way that it's in between my actual board right there as you can see so i've got part of it over here part of it occurring behind here so my plan is i'll be still using some more of this foam over on this side here to go probably about to here or something same on the other side so when i actually do any photos or videos of trains coming out here it's going to look like that it still continues in this area behind here just to get that bit of illusion if i can um, rather than having that dead space there which you can see and obviously if i take more videos down at this sort of level as you can see you can see this space all the way behind here where you can see my finger. So I'll have the hills going across here. Um, and you know what, even for an example, if I put this bit of foam right there, that already looks a little bit, uh, but obviously it's not long enough, but I'm um, sure if I had a, uh, an example, yeah, here we go, this would be perfect, I think. So an example like that, 
you know, you can see it looks like it continues on through, um, and that's my plan. So, so there we go. So apart from that, guys, that's the hot wire foam cutter, as I mentioned. So, you know, we've got this nice bit of embankment going right across here. Um, I do plan to uh, put in some... So what the plan is, uh, as I've mentioned before, I've got some grass that I'm going to paint, which I haven't really talked about much uh, nor revealed how I'm going to do it, but we're going to have a bit more taller grass on the embankment. We're going to have a fence line up here separating, you know, what would be a bit of farmland or anything like that. All through the country is what I call it. And then, of course, get to paint the bit of the back scene here to have this try and blend into the background there. So like I mentioned... So anyway, guys, hopefully that's of some interest to you. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the, your worst enemy when using hot wire foam cutter always is yourself. Uh, as you can see, I've just chucked all my off cuts right there. These will all come in handy, of course. And um, yeah, so it won't be too much far off and hopefully we'll start getting some color uh, on this area here as I mix it up a bit. So there we go, guys. And uh, and of course, if you know, watching this for the first time and you like what you're seeing on my channel, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I do read all your comments as well. So don't forget to leave a comment if you want to. Um, I do respond to them eventually. Even if I am busy with work, I will get around to them. Um, and yeah, of course, as always, I look forward to your uh, comments and uh, any details or recommendations. So, uh, so stay tuned guys. Now um, on a slightly different note, I do, uh, as you may or may not be aware, I didn't do a layout update for last month. Now the reason for that is because, well, you've been following my progress as I've done bits and pieces. If I did a layout update, it's recapping what we've already seen. Um, so I didn't feel there was a need to do a layout update and repeat and re-show what I've been doing. Um, because as far as I'm concerned, you guys already know what's been going on with the layout. So... Anyway, guys, take care, uh, be good, and we'll keep in touch. Bye for now.